All right, Mark, so where are we at here? So here we are at my former employer uh, in Fairfield, California at the Solano County Agriculture Commissioner's Office. This is where I worked for six years prior to jumping out on the FLW tour. Worked here as an agricultural biologist. I'm gonna go inside and say hello to some of my old co-workers, my old supervisors, and uh, give you guys a little quick run through doing, of what man? we used to do here. I got the camera crew with me, man. The circuit breaker, FLW, yeah, make sure, yeah, get it. <laughs> Oh, not too much. How you doing? Oh Good to see you. Yeah, see, Sharon keeps this candy right here underneath her desk, and she tries to hide it, but she didn't know that I knew where it was at. So anytime she would get up and go to the bathroom or something, I just reach under there like that and politely help myself to a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> What's up, Manny? How are you, oh, good, man. How are you, Manny? <laughs> good to see you, man. Good to see you. I was just telling him, I said, man, if, if I leave before Manny yeah. sees me, yeah. he's going to be so mad with me because I didn't get a chance to say bye to him, man. <laughs> I miss you, too, man. What's up, Jeff? Hey, wow, what happened, there, man? You good broke to your see you. Yeah, I broke my thumb. Oh, they haven't man. Told you the story yet? I told you about break dancing out on the PQ fields. You can't do that, no. man. Yeah, we, we, we miss Mark. When he was here, he did all of the different inspections. He was one of our fully licensed biologists. And so this is the office space or work area where I, I spent most of my time while I was here with the Ag Department. He could do nursery inspection and sudden oak death inspection. And Gypsy moth inspections. Export certification. Phytosanitary certificates, which is a fancy, fancy word for like a, a visa for, for plants. Commodities going to foreign countries and make sure it meets their requirements to go to their country. The glassy wing sharpshooter. The pesticide use enforcement. You know, that was something that we, we would do on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, we certify all the gas pumps and scales for the whole county. And so uh, that's pretty much what I did here. <laughs> Stop number five of the Walmart FLW Tour takes us to beautiful Lake Chickamauga in Dayton, Tennessee. It's early June and Chickamauga has really been coming into the headlines the last few years, mainly because it's kicking out gigantic largemouth. I'm talking seven, eight, 10 pounders. I mean, massive fish and fairly consistently. It's summertime, the fish are schooled up. You know, it's gonna be a, a lot of ledge fishing going on, which means there's a chance for a lot of really big bags. The only problem with Chickamauga is it's not like a Kentucky Lake where you have, you know, 90 miles of fishable ledges. It, it's really confined. It puts a lot of the anglers in tight quarters next to each other. It really makes strategy a whole lot different when it comes to ledge fishing. Guys sometimes will stop on a school and you know just to check to see if they can catch a fish or two and, and then they hook up and then they try to hide it. It's funny. You know, you got a three, four, five, whatever, however big it is, it's tail walking and then they're sitting there motionless looking off the other way. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why that five pounder is just jumping by itself. I don't know. It's just, I say, you just catch the fish, dude. Everyone sees you. You know? Most of the ledges on the lower end of Chickamauga are more or less community holes. And really what a community hole is, is it's a spot that always holds fish. The only problem is everyone knows about it. And I mean everyone. So then when you go to a lake, even if some of these pros have never been to say Chickamauga before, you give them three days of island around, you got 150 of the best guys you know, in the industry looking at the graph. They all kind of find the same spot. So these community holes become amplified more or less. And that's why you see 15, 20 or more guys stacked up on one spot. Most people think that a tour event is only four days long, and it is. It's Thursday to Sunday are the competition days, but most of these pros are actually in town for seven, eight days total. Uh, most guys will get there the Saturday before the tournament starts, and they're not allowed to fish, but they can get in, get settled into where they're staying, make sure their equipment's working good and, and in top shape. Then come Sunday, that's official practice. They get three days of official practice, and in that time, they have to scour the entire lake and try to locate fish. And especially on lakes like Chickamauga, where offshore fishing is a factor, they're not even really trying to catch fish. Guys will spend their entire practice maybe only hooking one fish, but instead they're graphing around, using their electronics, trying to locate bass. Yeah, there's a good hard bottom. And these guys are so good, they can tell what a school of bass is or what a school of catfish are. Uh, they can differentiate like that. So they just stare at their screens all day. Show yourselves.
most people get out well before the sun even comes up and a lot of guys get done well after the sun has gone down so it's you know 18 hours a day driving around in a boat looking for fish trying to find spots that are going to you know hopefully carry them to the final day or you know maybe even win the tournament well we've been island for hours looking for these mega schools and um haven't found one yet yeah i mean you, you see some groups of fish three four five at a time but i'm not seeing this you know, yeah just a bunch of them look there's nobody over there at the dang plant now oh really huh? i mean there's a ton of boats there there will be more boats. You could walk across the boats tomorrow over there. Yeah. It looks like there's grass in 18 foot, but that don't seem right. Why would there be grass that deep? Well, maybe there is. Yeah, you can see the stalks coming up, but it's awfully deep to be grass. I'm gonna throw in it and see. Yeah, the first uh, time I ever learned about community holes, I guess, was All-American, uh, day one. I had drawn Lionel Botha, if y'all don't know him, he's a super nice guy from South Africa, and we pulled up to his number one spot first thing in the morning, another boat come really close to us. I mean, I could cast in his boat if I wanted to, and I threw my arms up like, you know, what are you doing? And he just kept fishing, and then well, Lionel's like, well, Reach in the back, and drop the anchor. There's a rule if you have the anchor down, you're not allowed to be within 50 feet, I believe. Isn't that right, Mark? <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, it's 50 feet radius. Drop the anchor. <laughs> I said, all right. So I dropped that anchor and sure enough, the other boater had to, he called the tournament director and he went on his way. And, <laughs> As soon as I drop that anchor. <laughs> and so come to find out the guy that I threw my arms up at, uh, he was my boater day two. You're like, uh-oh. There's another really nice guy named Jason Hickey. He's like, did you drop an anchor yesterday? I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry I threw my arms up, you know, and all that. But, you know, I never knew about community hole fishing, and so I'd never fished like that before. And, he still treated me very nice that day, tied on a drop shot for me when I'd never known how to fish a drop shot. And by that, I caught my limit that second day and made the cut, drew Michael Black day three and fished up the river, which I'd never fished up the river before. And I just junk fished all day long and ended up getting a 6.8 pounder on a fighting frog. Bulldog division from Noonan, Georgia, Daniel Buswell. And that pretty much sealed the deal. Your champion is Daniel Buswell. Wow! Daniel Buswell, your co-angler, BFL All-American champion. And uh, that's how I met Mark, too, because if I would have never won the All-American, I would have never went to the Forestwood Cup, and I wouldn't be fishing the FLW Tour either without winning it. You know, I just figured if I've won that, I'd better step up another level and fish this two years, and about time to go boater. See, we'll be fishing like this right here and not, and not be catching nothing, and he'll say that. And drop the anchor. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he says it, man, it's just, it's just funnier, man. Every time. Drop the anchor. <laughs> you drop one more anchor. <laughs> drop the anchor. Dude, Lionel is going to kick somebody's ass. Oh, yeah. You got to crack jokes out here. Yeah, you do, man. So they get Sunday, Monday, Tuesday of practice. From there, they got Wednesday, which is an off day. They can't fish, but they can sleep in a little bit. Uh, you know, maybe actually have a decent breakfast and rig some tackle up. They have the official rules meeting they have to attend. From there, they can go home, get a good night's rest before they kick things off on Thursday. This is not gonna be an easy tournament for me. It's gonna be easy for somebody, but it's not gonna be me. So let the grind, let the grinding begin. Well, usually when you have a bad tournament or a practice, then you have a good tournament. So tournament. let's hope that's the uh, the issue here. You caught some good ones in practice, though. I mean, it's just you always catch good ones in practice, man. I know. <laughs> Passionate. No, like, oh, it's practice. I'm yeah. every bit of eight, 
63. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bite. And I'm going to stay on all the way up to the boat and playing with you all around the boat. And right. You can never shake on. me off. Yeah. I'm unshakable. On tournament day, you can never catch me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is Crawley still coming? Daniel? Yeah, he should be, man. Just let him know what we're doing for dinner or whatever. Hit his ass up. We need them baits. Is that working, Danny? Oh, yeah, dude. They're sharp as can you be. You got them sharp with that stone? Super sharp. Ready to snatch a bass. A wind I, told him we we should, I told him we should make a hair jig. Yeah. yeah. A hair <laughs> jig out of your hair. I that's imagine come that. with like one strand. Oversized <laughs> like <it's> jig <laughs> he made. Custom jig could come with one strand of crawly hair. <laughs> Look at that. That would just be flowing. Right? Dude. He can, he can make his own trout. Oh, like <laughs> like when, you, when you let it fall, it'll be like this. Ow, it'll just flare out. <laughs> it's beard was like it spread across it. After it's been in my buff for a while, it gets like mashed down and it's like a little waterfall. So when we're riding back to the ramp, I'll just let her free and just let her. When we go eat, around. he just tucks it down to his shirt like he's putting his tie in. <laughs> I heard he just spreads his beard out and rides Flutter down the lake. Away, yeah, yeah and he just parts the, the parts the beard. Yeah. All right, I got the big swim bait tied on. I'm I'm good, man. Now I just need to uh, change this rod tip because the insert came out. Mark, you got them tips, man. I've this is like the last piece of my puzzle. Is this right here? I got to get, get that get that one off, dude, and I'll get you a new one. Off. All right, yo, yeah, get your lighter heated up. Get some new nose, pull it off. Okay. Yeah. They're my favorite pair I've ever had. I yeah. Like... Really? <laughs> yeah, no, pop it off. There we go. It's already right. popping. There we go. Bada boom, bada bing. That's all. Do I need to you scrape that off? I just to want to get it, get it clean. MDJ, save the day. Yeah. What do you Make say? Sure hey, hey, hey. Yeah, it's pretty straight, good. Like a glove. Yep. That's perfect. That's tied out. Good just, to go. Yep, just let that sit for like five minutes, dude. All right, I will. Thank Good you, Mark. Back in the game. <laughs> <clears throat> this is where I'm getting ready to sit and scratch my brain on what I'm going to do tomorrow. Oh. The goal remains the same. Five keeper bass. That's all I let you bring in anyways, five of them. So me, I don't have a particular school of fish that I want to go to. So, but given that I'm early boat draw, I may just gamble a little bit and go stop on some deep spots where I did catch fish in practice or had some bites and see if we can pluck a few prior to going, going up shallow. Go sleep on it and hopefully uh, Sandman brings me some big ones tomorrow.
you know, I rolled in, I saw Adrian was sitting like right on the, the actual spot where of course we all wanted to be. And I was, I, I came off pack quite a ways out, idled in, put my trolling motor down, trolling motor over to him, you know, and asked him like, hey man, you know, you mind if I fish this other side of this, this ledge or this other side of this point? And, and Adrian's cool, me and him already have a rapport, man. We're, you know, we're cool anyways. And so he's like, oh yeah, no problem, dude. Just do whatever you need to do. And, you know, and I, and I just made sure I stayed out of his way and gave him respectful amount of room. And we worked it out and we both caught fish. So these offshore fisheries like Chickamauga, I mean, this is my first time here, but I knew some of the sweeter spots were gonna get crowded. And that's just how it is. And so Adrian got tangled up. That was hella funny. But their line just got tangled up. I don't know if they exchanged words or not. I was a little further away from them, but uh, they worked it out, and we all we all fished and we all caught fish. And so, you guys got tangled. Yeah. I know it. But I mean, you get tangled up with somebody, they might get frustrated at you, and next thing you know, anything might happen. But uh, that's the game. So it's just have common courtesy, talk to one another, and uh, work it out, man. It's all about catching fish. We all have the same goal, so. Nick. I'm just gonna take my time with this one. Light line. Which side are you gonna to come to? Uh, I'm gonna try to come to this side over here, but he's, you know what, behind me, over here. Thanks, sir. It was, dude, I didn't even, what's crazy is I didn't see you hooked up and I just switched up. I'm like, maybe if I switch up and then I look up and you're on. I just don't like tough tournaments, bro. I don't like tough fishing. I don't like tournaments where you gotta catch 18 pounds a day and do good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, dude. I just, I just want to catch a limit, bro. I mean, I think if you can get enough bites, there's too many, too many quality fish. You fishing shallow at all? I did. There's some big ones up there, bro. I'll make one more cast, bro, and we're gonna take off after this one there. There we go. You sure you wanna take off? Pretty big one.
in there. At least five. I'd say. I, I said, I'm gonna make one more cast, then we're gonna go. It's just one of them deals, man. They get, I mean, this is a spot they get every time. And if you hear when they get here, you'll catch them, but if not, dude, you can waste a lot of time too. Yeah, this is a place that I don't think, I don't think they really live here. They use it, you know? Yeah. So it's either they come in here and feed, or you know, if we both cut out at the same time, there's gonna be some happy person driving by this place. Oh, you ain't lying. But that don't mean they gonna catch them either though, man. Uh, you need a bunch on your grab or no? Not really. You? Yeah. Yeah, I'm on I'm on this side of it on the break too. You try and hit another deep hole or are you gonna go shallow? Man, I got like four other spots that that I wanna fish deep, you know, but you know how that goes. They're all community holes. Thank you, sir. That was good the last couple, but that. How's it going, boss? How are you? Oh, I can't complain, man. You did good, my man. Hey, I ain't complaining, man. It was been a rough, rough week, and very happy to have these. Uh, all the way. Thank you. Here's the star right here, Mr. Mark Daniels Jr. How we doing today, man? Doing pretty good, man. Um, enjoying my, myself down here in Dayton, Tennessee, man. Beautiful Lake Chickamauga. This place is just loaded with big ones. Uh, I had a really rough practice and managed to catch a couple decent ones today, so I'm really happy about that and uh, <clears throat> looking forward to getting out there tomorrow and trying to duplicate a similar bag and hopefully make the cut. All right, man. Well, you do have a five bass limit. And it's a great start, man. 18 pounds, seven ounces, sitting oh. in third place, Mark Daniels. Man, we live to fight again. That's how, that's how, that's how I've been this season. Just live to fight another day. Exactly. You're, you're still in pretty good shape. With day one in the books, everyone's weighed in. Mark's sitting in 29th place. And again, another strong showing for a guy who's never been to this lake before. And he's sitting in the top, basically quarter of the field. Six. That's all it needs. Three, four, five, six. Take no, seven. you take. Just give me four. You take oh, more. Right, You're gonna be six. Okay. If I use all them shits, boy. Yeah. Well, I hope you do. I really do. I can wacky rig that thing too. That's what, that's what I'm about to do, or mm -hmm. at least try to anyway. That's exactly what I'm doing. People just don't understand how tough and difficult this game is, man. I don't, I don't think they do. Those that do it, of course, do. But how many hours do you think we put in per tournament? Man, a lot, dude. We we fish. With this to travel to well, the lake think about it. and then travel back. We fish sun up to then... sundown. I mean, that's 
what, 10, 12 hours of just fishing. Yeah. Dang, Easy. Rigging. Now it's like, tw yeah, it all depends on the time of year, but now it's getting, you yeah. know, darker later. I mean, we put in 15 hours in our lab, you know, this week, each day, almost. That's for sure. And then you get to the tournament and you wake up early and get to the dock and uh, fish all day and come back and rig rods, but we love it and that's why we do it. A lot of people wonder how tour anglers become professionals. And the truth is, you know, some of them come right out of high school. They were able to just go in 100%, fish their way up, make enough money, and, you know, start getting sponsorships to help them to get to that level. Uh, others worked in the trades, and, and it was kind of a, you know, the seasonability of the jobs allowed them opportunities to get out and fish. So whether it was construction or carpentry or, you know, being a welder or whatever, they had time to get on the water. Mark's story is unique in that he went to Tuskegee University, got a degree, got a gig being an agricultural biologist out in California, and I mean, really had a pretty good thing going. It, it was a career he could have easily retired at, uh, you know, and had a good living. As far as a nine to five is concerned, checking in, clocking in, going to work, I actually loved what I did. You know, you got to go spend eight hours somewhere. Um, you you want to definitely do something that you enjoy. And, and, and that being, working as an inspector, I really enjoyed that. You know, I, prior to that, I worked at Frito Lay loading trucks with chips. And uh, I was desperately trying to get out of there. So when this came around, um, you know, I was, I was really happy and fortunate to, to, to be hired on as a, as a trainee at the time and then uh, kind of worked my way up into a full-time biologist position. But, uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed the line of work and um, learning and working with different growers and farmers. I had pretty much free, free reign. I was kind of like my own boss in a sense. I came in, of course, I checked in with my supervisor, got my assignments for the day. And, and I would probably spend about an hour gathering paperwork, checking emails, things along those lines. And then we would head out into the field where we we would conduct inspections, and it was it was cool. It wasn't one of those jobs that you took home with you. You know, it was low stress. I knew what I needed to do. I came in, got my job done, went home, never thought about work again until I went back to work, and then went fishing on the weekends. And Mark was a just a very valuable staff member when he was here, and um, but I think some of those talents, the life science talents that you have as a biologist probably translate well to being a fisherman because you're doing the same kind of uh, analysis of habitat and um, you know living systems. Yep, and that there is that correlation between uh, the natural sciences and just kind of how nature works in a sense that relates over into uh, the bass fishing world. I mean, um, you know, just as simple as, you know, fish love to live in the grass and, and that's where the, the forage hides and, and things along those lines. You know, you kind of learn about that along the way through schooling and uh, obviously working here, uh, just the way ecosystems kind of work. Well, and all the <clears throat> feed sources for, for the fish there. Exactly. Yeah, I think, I think about you guys often on tour because, you know, I encounter many A-rated pests. <laughs> and uh, it, it's just so funny because I'm out here fishing at times, like yesterday, I'm outside, I'm redoing tackle and whatnot, and there's some bushes behind me, and, and I look back, and all of a sudden, this bug just plows me in the chest. I'm like, wow, what, what the heck? Falls down on my lap, and I look at it, and lo and behold, what is it? It's a Japanese beetle. And I was like, nah, no way. Well, I know everyone's like, well, what's that? A Japanese beetle <laughs> in California is what we consider an A-rated pest, meaning that it must be eradicated right away. And I mean, we look every single year to make sure none of our counties have this particular beetle because they're uh, really aggressive feeders and they eat a lot of the foliage on different plants and what have you. And so we want to keep it away, right? <clears throat> I say, you know, I'm gonna go look. Now, now I'll put my inspector cap back on, right? I'm like, let me go investigate this. And so I jump off my boat and I'll go over there and there were hundreds Japanese beetle. I mean, hundreds of them. And, and, and one of them could make an inspector's career. Yeah, here, out here. here. <laughs> exactly. You know, there's a lot of inspectors that go their whole career without finding what we consider an A-rated pest. I and quarantined so, the area, so when I made sure everything <laughs> was quarantined, yeah. And then I went and checked it out, and, and uh, it's just a trip to see it. It's like to see these Japanese beetles everywhere, you know. It, it, it would be pretty big news back home in Cali, but out here it's just like, oh, that's just a Japanese beetle. The southern waterways will have hydrilla. Oh, thick, that, that's you know? what I was going to talk to. So, you know, at, from a fishing standpoint, we love hydrilla, and so do the bass. Oh, All of the bass love hydrilla. We go out on lakes and specifically try to find hydrilla because that's where the bass will, will live oftentimes. Um, 
And, and that's another one here, A-rated pest. A -rated it's a huge no-no, yeah. yeah. It would be the most devastating thing that could get into the California Delta. Yes. Probably of all the things that are out there, it would be the worst thing we could get. It's hydrilla. Yeah. yeah. We already have water hyacinth as a surface pest. If we had hydrilla as a submerged pest, they just choke down the delta. Absolutely. And this is one of the, the beauties of, of going to college and, and, and seeking higher education for all the young folks watching. Um, you you want to give yourself outs and things to fall back on. At the end of the day, worst case scenario, I can go get another job. I can work a nine to five. You know, um, I don't want to do that. I want to fish. I want to be in this industry. I want to succeed as a professional angler. It's been my dream since I was a child. Uh, if it hits the fan, then I'll, I'll go. I'll go back to work and uh, clock in as, a, as an inspector or ag biologist or at McDonald's if I have to. Whatever it takes. But you know, right now we're we're fishing. We've been uh, we've been great distance from these guys, haven't we? Yeah. I say we've been plenty plenty distance from these dudes, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Dude keeps looking. Oh, I got him. That's how I could, couldn't wait. Sorry, dude. <laughs> I wanted that dude in the box. Oh.
You're the man. 18-7 on day one. Start out this year with a top 10 finish at Lake Toho down in Florida. Five more today. 15 pounds, 10 ounces, as you in 27th place. Payday. Definitely a payday, man. And, um, you know, I'm just really happy to be able to come to this lake. It's my first time here at Lake Chickamauga, man. And you guys here at Dayton are really uh, are really blessed to have a lake such as good as Chickamauga, man. This place fish is awesome when you get on them. Uh, a lot of these schools guys found and beat them up. And I found a couple, too, and it just didn't work out for me. But luckily, I was able to resort to what I like to do. I got shallow, pulled off my snag-proof frog, and started letting her rip in that grass, man, and got a couple good bites. And so fortunate to have that. There you go, Mark, 27th place. Good job to you, sir, as always. With the scale closed on day two, Mark finds himself up one spot to 28th, ending his tournament here on Chickamauga. However, gives him a nice check and, even better, some really good points to qualify for the Forestwood Cup. In fact, it moves him from 23rd in the standings up to 15th place. And heading into the last tournament of the year, I mean, barring any huge meltdown on his part or a meltdown on his part, and the guys behind him winning the tournament or any other crazy stuff happening, it looks like Mark Daniels is heading to the Forest Wood Cup on Lake Wachita. Now, two years into his career of professional fishing, it's looking pretty good as each tournament passes that Mark's decision to basically leave his career behind in California and chase these little green fish around might not be a bad idea after all. As far as having a nine to five, having to come in and clock in and put in eight and go home, I really enjoyed working here. So it was hard to separate with that, but the passion yeah, side of it. You know, medical benefits, yeah. and yeah, all, that, all that, for all, sure. All, all that, yeah, to, yeah, to walk away from that, to gamble that on. Absolutely, on fishing. I mean, let's just be real about it. Yeah, on fishing, but. You can use that, what do they call it, deathbed analysis? Sure. That on your deathbed, do you really wish you had stayed with the ag office or do you really wish you had gone on the tour? Right. I think that you had to go on the tour. Absolutely. Yep. So. You guys caught me like at the tail end of it, but I mean, this has been me since I was a little, little kid. And so it was a now or never situation and I, and I had to go for it.